The Euphrates River is one of the world's oldest and most stunning natural bodies of water in the world. Because of its historical significance, many explanations are being carried out in and around the river to better understand human history. In Genesis 15, 18, it has been said, On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, and said, To your descendants I give this land, from the Wadi to Egypt of the great river, the Euphrates. There are many references in the Bible, Quran, and the Torah about the significance of the river Euphrates and its sister, Tigris. In recent years, interest has increased in what scary discoveries the river may hold given the myriad of mysteries surrounding the Middle East. For many Christians, the mention of the Euphrates brings their attention to religious texts in the book of Revelation and certain parts of the book of Genesis. Many others know about the river as a result of paying attention to geography class. The river is one of Western Asia's most significant and longest rivers. Beginning in Turkey, it flows through the region's southeast mountains and southern foothills, traveling through Syria and Iraq, where it passes through several different types of vegetation before emptying into the Persian Gulf. Punches of the ancient vegetation still exist in the Euphrates Basin, even though centuries of human habitation and activities have severely ruined the terrain. In 1923, the three riparian governments of the Euphrates, France, Turkey, and the United Kingdom had come to an agreement on the usage of its waters and the building of any hydraulic installations which shows how important the river has been not just to religion but politics as well. The Euphrates experiences its highest water levels from April through May because it obtains the majority of its water from rainfalls and snowmelt. According to one source, the river discharges between 60 and 70 percent of its yearly total over these two months, although there is less runoff in the summer and fall months. According to a 1946 agreement between Turkey and Iraq, Turkey was required to inform Iraq of any hydraulic changes it made to the Tigris and Euphrates River system, and Iraq was even permitted to build a dam on Turkish soil to control the flow of the Euphrates River. However, as of 2021, news in the Middle East reported severe drought and hastily decreasing water levels. In the months that followed fallout, alarms had begun to arise over the fact that the ancient river was drying up. The rapidly decreasing water levels have alarmed the geological experts, making them confused and highly concerned as to what might be causing this terrifying situation. On the land, the detrimental impacts of the receding waters are evident, as the water levels in Syria's dam lakes have declined as a result of the water restrictions from the Turkish government, and so have the region's electrical supply and production. Not only is the river drying up, but the riverbanks of the Euphrates River are losing agricultural land. Lack of water for agriculture is a death sentence in a nation where 60% of the people struggle to put food on the table. In Iraq, an additional 7 million run their risk of going without access to water, and while governments are concerned about their boundaries, the weather is not. The Euphrates River Water Reduction Policy of the Turkish government, according to the Autonomous Administration of the North and East Area, will put 9 million Syrians who live near the river at risk of humanitarian catastrophes. Most critically, it has become harder to have access to water for drinking, meaning there might be grave health consequences for people. The United Nations has also warned that the Mediterranean will experience increasingly devastating heat waves. Syria is one of the nations with the highest risk according to the Global Climate Risk Index, which claims that even the river Assad suffers as a result of this pattern. Residents of the village to Hania, where blackouts have grown from 9 to 19 hours each day, their olive trees are thirsting and the animals are hungry. This issue seems to affect not only the residents but also workers as some engineers feel that if this keeps on, they might stop producing energy for everyone except bakeries, grain mills, and hospitals. Since there are only a handful of logical theories as to why the river is drying up, people have taken to believe that this happening is connected to the biblical book of Revelation. Shockingly, fewer people are astonished by the development as they claim that it was bound to happen since the Bible documented its occurrence. What terrifies people more is the fact that the end of the world as prophesied in the Bible is becoming a reality right before their eyes. Many believe that the important chapters of the apocalyptic book of Revelation provide evidence of Iraq's relevance in end-time scenarios. The Euphrates River, which flows through modern-day Iran, was mentioned in chapter 16 of the book of Revelation, which also contains the only allusion to Armageddon in the Bible. 
According to the book, the sixth angel poured out his bow on the river Euphrates, and its waters were dried out to prepare the way for the kings from the east. According to religious subtext, the bow's contents forced the river to stop flowing, and most of the water on earth had been contaminated or ruined by the previous bow judgments. The purpose of this judgment is not to taint or stop using this water, but rather appears to be about demolishing a defensive barrier to open the way for advancing eastern kingdoms. The Euphrates separated east from the west during the time of writing of Revelation, and to the east of it were the kingdoms of China and India. The river was referred to in the Bible several times as the Great River. It marked the inheritance eastern frontier for Israel. It protected Israel as it was challenging for enemies and the desert lay between it and Canaan, the promised land to the west. Historically, by rerouting the Euphrates River, which passed through Babylon, Cyrus of Persia's soldiers managed to take control of the city centuries before. They marched over its dry riverbed into Babylon to take the city. In another biblical reference to the Euphrates, the sixth angel of God is told to release the four angels who are imprisoned at the great river Euphrates, and upon doing so the angels of death, who are said to be kept ready this particular hour and day and month and year, and were released to kill a third of mankind are led free. Recently, rumors are circulating, possibly to justify this passage by spreading news of some strange voices believed to emanate from the depths of the drying river. This has further reinforced people's beliefs that these events taking place right now are a sign of Christ's second coming to conquer his enemies and establish his heavenly kingdom. However, the New Testament professor at Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C., Craig Hale, is one of many biblical scholars who complained that the end-time interpreters twist the Bible to support their viewpoints. He claimed that while many professors read the Bible literally, they actually use passages from the books that were written under various conditions and hundreds of years apart. One of the most well-known end times books, Ezekiel, was penned in the 6th century BC by a Judean priest who was exiled to Babylon and had dreams of the restoration of the temple and the return of the Jews to Israel. A Christian expatriate who was encouraging the churches of Asia Minor to endure Roman rule 600 years later, around 95 AD, wrote the book of Revelation. This leaves us with a lot to ponder after reading these passages. It's also interesting to note that reading from the book of Enoch, under the text some claim is directly related to the Bible. We learn of a story from the Genesis period in which Enoch, a prophet before Noah, spoke of living in a time where there were 200 angels called the Watchers. Their sole duty was to watch over creation. One day they looked upon human women either through the influence of the fallen angel Lucifer or through other means. Born out of the union were giants. According to some scholars, the giant breeding angels who were punished for their sins remain trapped beneath the Euphrates and will be let go to obliterate a third of the planet. People have begun to talk about their worries and express their delight, saying that they never thought that they would see revelations truly make sense. What was before very difficult to understand is now more evident. While the most intriguing notion about the river revolves around biblical prophecies, other theories link the current happening around the Euphrates' political goals and climate change. Ever since Jesus Christ had said that only God knows the day and time of the second coming of the Messiah, preachers and some self-appointed doomsdayers have been trying to predict the day of the judgment. Many people who are obsessed about the end of the world often forget to live the precious life that they have been given and waste their time worrying. They could have helped others in an effort to help improve the society, but they chose to fret over something that cannot be predicted by a mere human being. In Isaiah 11:15, it's been said, The Lord will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea. With a scorching wind, he will sweep his hand over the Euphrates River. He will break it up into seven streams so that anyone can cross over in sandals. There are many references in the Bible that clearly state the drying up of the river Euphrates by God's wrath. This may be an indication that the prophecies are actually coming true. Mark Hitchcock says that the interest in prophecy increases at a time of great instability and spiritual turmoil. Mark is the author of several books on prophecy. He's the pastor of Faith Bible Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. He says that humans are curious beings and that they want to know what's going to happen and that there is an end to the turmoil and that someone is in control. Some believers are convinced that before the Great Tribulation, the Antichrist will rule the world from a restored Babylon. Do you think all of this has any kind of relation with the book of Revelation, or has it anything to do with climate change and global warming? I guess we're about to find out.